Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Power of Us. This is Abel. And this is his surviving wife, Rosie. Yes, it is. Oh man, that sounds like if you passed away. Right. That sounds horrible. Yeah. Like he is survived by a gorgeous wife right. and three beautiful children. <laughs> right. That's what they would say, right? Mrs. Worship. Yes, Mrs. Worship. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say it like that, but but we are surviving. Yes. Um, or at least we are thinking of, of obviously, the... the um, incident the devastation the the horrible accident that happened with kobe bryant this past couple weeks yes it was was last sunday we received it while we were at church and uh it it was very shocking because that's another person i guess not tied to us but a person that you'd never think would be passing away anytime soon yeah no i i understood from a fan's point of view what it is to live what I lived with Che on the other side. And you can't compare pain. Um, There's no way to compare what Vanessa and the other family members are going through. And just to make it clear, we only speak of Vanessa because that's who we know by name. Okay, I I don't know the other people's lives or their spouses or their brothers and sisters or their children. But if we did, we would give them the exact same respect. We speak of Vanessa Bryant because that's who we've seen. You know, she right. literally grew up in front of our eyes when she started dating Kobe and then got married. And just we've seen her family grow, you know. So yeah. it, I think we shared it in that sense. Um, but then everyone, if you're a mother, if you're a wife, if you're a human um, and, and you saw everything go down, you could only imagine Vanessa's yeah. pain. You didn't have to be a basketball fan. Right. I, I am a Jordan fan, and I was the one arguing Jordan's the best, you know, and and the, so, but there was always this utmost respect for Kobe. Yeah. Um, as a as a per, as a player, um, and then I really started to respect him when he was going through the trial, and I think he was in where, Texas. Where was it? It was somewhere where he had to fly. So he was going through a trial, would finish at what 10 a.m., fly to L.A., and then score 40 point games. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that but I remember I that whether he was guilty or not that is not anything we should discuss now because it's already been dealt with yeah and that's one of the things I don't like about death so today let's talk about how we'd handle death yeah I I, I couldn't believe what happened how it happened um he's never one of those people that you thought would would just pass away but isn't you know? that in general I, I guess it is I mean, but it's like, like I don't think you're ever ready for it Right. You know? No. And and we weren't ready for it when it happened with Jay. We weren't ready for it. Like, you know, it's just one of those things like this didn't sound right. You yeah. know, Prince didn't sound right, but he was closer to the end of his life in a sense. Um, you know, just, just people people like that just they just pass away from nowhere, you know? Yeah. Like Juan Gabriel or even Jose Jose, they lived their full life. And although it was abrupt, but it was like I don't know. It was closer I to argue, the end. I argue with people, and this is it's not insensitive at all. It's I argue with, and from someone that's lived it, my sister died at mm. 43 years old, prime of her career right. and prime of her life. People would argue, and people say, all the good people leave too soon. I don't like that saying. Um, her life was cut short. I don't like that saying either. Mm. Because I truly believe that God has a time and a date set for us. Right. So what we do with those years is up to us. Yeah. Yes, yes. His daughter dying at 13 is devastating. And I am very careful about saying anything about that. But I do know a God that has the hairs on our head counted right. and the days of our lives counted. So if it's short, is it because we didn't do enough with it? Or... You know, I, I don't like that saying. Did it devastate us? Yes. Does it seem short to us? Yes. Yeah. Because we could visualize he or she still had more to do, especially when I talk about Che, right? Right. She had more to do. Right. In my eyes. But what if to God it was like, baby, we're done. Let's go home. Wow. Do you get me? Yeah, I get you. We have to be very sensitive because feelings are involved. But when we're talking about God and his plan, then... That was the plan. And and a girl DM'd me and said, this isn't fair. Why would God do this? And I'm like, what's fair? Get yeah. me? Yeah. If, if, if it was fair, we'd all go to hell. Christ would have never died on a cross. You know, we'd all be dead in year 10 of our lives because we all did something dangerous. Right. You You could have... Died on that mountain where you broke your arm. <sighs> right. You were 13. Yeah. You know, I, I would, did so many bad things. Like, 
not bad things, just dangerous or risky things, like whatever it may be, we we can't be the judge of fair. Yeah. Even when it's as horrific as this. Right. And you and it does question your faith. I'm I'm saying it because it questioned mine. It does put to test your relationship with God. You are not bad if someone has died in your life and you go into this deep depression. You went to a depression with your grandma. You right. were a believer yeah, I did. for years. I did. And it doesn't make you a, a bad son, a bad Christian, none of that. Death tests us. And I believe it's because our our bodies weren't planned for death. If we see, you know, in Genesis, I believe, and I've asked God, and I can't say, like, oh, I have all the answers. This is this is what what gets me through. Okay. I ask God, like, why can't I accept or understand or like why doesn't my mind get it that Che's gone because seven years later there's still days where I'm like what she's not here like my body can't comprehend it it's because when God created Adam and Eve it was for eternity it was to be here right sin brought death and then God brought a solution to death, a victory over death you know death where is your sting so I think our spirits are still like you don't go into nothingness. We don't go into space. You know, do I know exactly what happens after? No. But do you get it? So when when your test is, when your faith is tested after a death, a devastating death, any death, it's normal and just go through it, you know? But I really don't know what I would do if you left. I really don't know what I'd do. That's, that's I think, has been the question with us this week. and And it's like I've tried putting myself in those shoes and just thinking like, we were together this morning and then all of a sudden we're not, you know? And then on top of that, not only that, also one of our kids is yeah. also gone. No, I don't like, I um, don't know. I really don't know how I could handle well, it. Well, I was, I was kind of, um, very bothered and annoyed that, um, go, they say, I didn't, I don't watch the show. <laughs> they say Gordo La Flaca showed up to one of the husband's homes like asking about his wife that had passed away on the helicopter. Like how disgustingly rude. He's not famous because their excuse is always, oh, you're a public figure, Rosie. You have to put up with it. She named yeah. you trustee. You have to do interviews. You're her sister. And this is what your family does. And and then at the same time, they call me not an artist. So you don't really do anything. So I'm neither this nor that, but we get to bother you anyway. Yeah. But this person is 100% not a public figure. Right. And they showed up at his door how could they like with what excuse and and i believe that one of the things we have to learn through death is be sensitive to other people like be compassionate be merciful if anything right like when my family we committed so many mistakes we got mad at the dumbest things at each other not talking for years because one honored Che this way and another honored Che that's this way and one thought cremation and one thought, you know, let's not bury her until every single last body part, as gruesome as it sounds, that's what it was, is there. I mean, it, it was horrific. And everyone had different ideas. And because of different ideas, people started to hate each other. Yeah. Can you believe it? Like, wow. if you were to die, let's not say if, it's when. And that's just the truth. And we are so ignorant with all due respect to try and ignore, you know, they say ignorance is bliss, but I want to be wise. Let's live our life to the fullest. Let's tell each other we love each other every day. Let's not go to sleep upset. Let's really think when he leaves this house, I'm going to kiss him and say goodbye and say that I love him. Right. Not if Abel's going to pass away, baby, one day you will. And one day I will. And I pray, you know, we're together, you yeah. know, li- me a little bit older than you, but all little people dying together would be amazing. But we'd still have to prepare our kids for our death, have a will, have life insurance. Um, you know, I, that's what I would want and not pretend that you're going to live till you're 160. Right. Um, you know, I don't I don't know what preparations um, Vanessa and, and, and Kobe had. It would still devastate. But the fact that there's something in order, I think, helps. Say, I, I'd love to get a grave site one day and say, anything happens, don't stress about a the plot. money. Yeah, like, don't stress about the money. Don't right. stress about the place. I'd like to leave everything <coughs> done for you guys. 
so that you yeah, guys don't I, have to worry about that. I think that so many people, especially in our Hispanic community, we're so scared of, of death that we don't do it. Yeah. You know, that we don't get life insurance, that we don't get a will done. Yeah. We don't get a plot that way because it's the same reason why we don't go to the doctor. We don't go to the doctor because we're scared to that they're going to say something. Yeah. You know, but I think that it's something that that's, it's really good. You know, for us to have, yeah. and and it's it's for security for our family's future, and stuff like that. Um, so I mean, I just I found myself thinking, what the hell would you do, Abel, if you know it's it's Sammy and Rosie that just oh my god one day don't don't come back home ever again, and I'm just I'm trying to think. I'm like, dude, like I wouldn't be okay. Like as as much of a man of God that I am, or as as much as I know that God is real and that God is is there for me, like I would need God to yeah. like force His way into me, because I would just be so shut down, so depressed. Mm. I would be the worst. It would be so hard for me to run to God at that moment and understand and just accept and stuff like that. You know, and I I don't yeah. know. You know, you never know, but I just. I know I'd be devastated. I wouldn't ever be the same. And it's like, yeah. how do you do that? You know, yeah. and 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 it's it's so hard for you to lose one person, but for you to lose two people at the same time, I'm like, yeah. oh my god, like, how does that happen? Yeah, you know, like how, like, why? And and I just I tried thinking about it, and I can't. Do you know one of one of the families? I think there was a father, a mother, and yeah. a daughter. They yeah. had two other children. I I can't. I, like I, so, they're orphaned. Get me, and and I think he's in his teens. Um, can you, I just, you know, I pray that there's a grandmother, a grandfather, an aunt, a church organization, yeah. someone in his life that just won't leave him alone because it's not going to be pretty. You know, it's not the the death and grieving brings out the worst in you, and you guys got to see it publicly with my family. And I pray that people have more mercy. A lot of you guys had mercy, and I love you guys, and you guys are probably here. But, you know, right now the world is loving, Vanessa. Mm -hmm. But soon, and I, I pray not, but I think, knowing the media, they're going to start talking about the mom and the dad. Yeah. And they're going to start talking about the sisters. Mm -hmm. It's going to be intense coverage at the ceremony right did they talk to vanessa did she let them come in yeah. it's gonna go from honoring a great person and great people to a scandal uh, yes why because it sells because yeah. right now they're getting so much ratings off of kobe and you know that that's part of being a public figure okay but then after when the ratings start coming down they're going to have to do something to keep it up. And the way they did with Che and Juan Gabriel and Jose Jose and um, every other one, you yeah. know, uh, Juan Sebastian, they went on for months. Yeah. Just well, we their it, ratings. It's super duper sad. They, they give about a week after the person passes away of honoring them. And then after that, the only coverage you're going to see is issues between their family or or this and that came up, or all of a sudden they have a hidden son that came out of the closet yeah. or something like that. It's super well, you sad. were livid with the Aaron Hernandez, Aaron Hernandez. Yeah, thing? I, I was just the, I, a Netflix it special. Just, it truly bothers me. Yeah. When when people do that, well, let's say that they pass away or something bad happens, you lift them up for a small mm. period of time, and then you just bring them down, and you try bringing them down lower and lower and lower than where they were before. Oh, well, that's that the media sense. in general, yeah, at least the Spanish media. Whether you're living or past, they're going to raise you up as high as they can and then drop you so, because both brings ratings. With all due respect, people love to see people rise, and then they love to see them fall. So I pray with the things that have been changing with TMZ, the fact that People were fired, not fired, suspended for giving bad information. People were like, ay, pobrecito. No, man. If someone got bad information, I think they had said that all his children had been on the helicopter. Yeah. That anger was suspended. Mm -hmm. And that's good. And, and the backlash that TMZ has been getting, handle it. Take it. Because they, they weren't supposed to tell anyone. At least the Bryant family said that no one had the authorization. Or they, and they said, oh, someone from the police department told us, hey, maybe that, that police officer should be, yeah. you know, um, because it's too much. Like, I saw my sister's foot on the Internet. What's that? Get me? Why? Oh, just because it's open? No. Yeah. It's, you have no 
compassion or remorse. And all of us are going to go through death. And I pray that I can handle it in such a way that if and when, no, when you pass away, if I'm still here, that people really have compassion on me because it would not be pretty. Yeah. I, I don't know if I could, I don't know what I would tell Sammy and Casey yeah. and Eli. I don't know what words I would give. I don't know if I'd look beautiful at your funeral. I'd probably be a mess. You know, I don't know if I'd get the right singer or the right flowers. Wow. I don't know what your right flower is. You know, wow. we don't know that yet. Um, that's why, like I said, I'd like to have some things done so we wouldn't have to worry about them. You know, Abel and I already have our will. Dude, you, you were super young. We already have life insurance. Yeah. Because there's some things that I would not want you to worry about. I yeah. really wouldn't want you to. I, I, I want you to pray and grieve and hug people and, you know, not thinking of like, oh, would, would Rosie like to be cremated? I, you know, boy, do what you want with my body, whatever makes you feel good, yeah. you know? Um, but I would just really hope that as a family, we can be really merciful with each other because mm -hmm. my family was not. Yeah. We were not. We were so angry at the way Che had been taken away that we didn't know who to be angry with. Um, and then everyone was angry because you know what? There was all of a sudden lawsuits. I mean, Che died December 9th and they wanted me in Mexico on December 13th. They were already calling me, you know, to, to come and talk to the families. What are you going to do for the families? I, w I was still hoping my sister was alive. Uh, I mean, people wanted me to read the will on December 10th. Wait a minute. Let me make sure she's really gone. What if she's crawling without a foot close to a river? You know, yes, it sounds crazy, but that's part of grieving. It's yeah. bargaining. It's it's not accepting. It's denial. It's it's going everywhere in between. So I, I bet you, I can almost bet that right now people are contacting Vanessa Bryant's team, asking her for a movie, asking her for a book, yeah. asking her for that interview. We'll pay you a million dollars, Vanessa. She yeah. doesn't need money. It's it's but they want to be the first. It's and it's to me, it was crazy. It was offensive. Yeah. It, it wasn't even a week or two after Che had passed and people were coming up to me, hey, we want to do Jenny's movie. Slow down. Can I? Can we put her in the ground first? So there was absolutely no mercy. And I think it's because people haven't lived it. Wow. But what if we we get there first and say, let's, let's pretend we had lived it. Let's have empathy. Yeah. What would I want people to do for me yeah. if someone died? Now, there was also a lot of awesome people. Do you remember Cardenas brought us a grip of yeah. water? Just so much water because people were outside and there was so many people inside. There was literally like 40, 50 people living here at my yeah. mom's. And they just brought water and tamales and gave them away to people outside. Yeah. Para que no tuvieran hambre. I thought that was one of the most gorgeous gestures. Other people brought food. Everyone bought flowers outside. It was gorgeous. One of the hardest, most difficult things to see, but it was gorgeous. Yeah. So I get where Vanessa wants to keep like every card. And I have to be a thousand percent honest. I wasn't like that. Mm. My mom's like that. She has saved every single letter that Chase fans have brought. Every single one. Our garage is full. And I'm like, mom. Isn't, isn't it enough? She's like, no. Yeah. The fact that Vanessa wanted to do that really taught me a lesson. I don't have to be like my mom. I don't have to be like Vanessa, you know, but I could understand people more yeah. and say, she wants to save every single petal. Okay, mom, let's do it. You know, um, be, just because I'm not like that doesn't mean it's not okay for my mom to be like that. Yeah. Wow. I, I think this is a, a crazy time. I want to talk about what, we should expect from the Bryants after the break. And uh, I mean, it's just, it's, it's crazy. All right, guys, welcome back. And there, there's something that I've, I've been able to see through you and through your family. And, and it's something that I want to share with everybody else being on that other side where like, yes, um, uh, I saw my sister-in-law pass away and I, I wasn't a fan. I had a small relationship with my sister-in-law where it was growing and, but then, year and a half she she's no longer with with my with my wife and with her family and with us and so what i come to tell you guys is what we should expect from vanessa bryant is and the bryant family in general all the families you know because god knows what the media is going to try to do with the other families mm -hmm. and try to blow them up and try to make them media personalities for no reason just to gain ratings um we should expect absolutely nothing yeah that's so good. and be okay with it yeah like if vanessa 
just becomes a wreck. Uh, granted, this is a time, a time of grieving that they need to go through. Yeah, so privately, don't, don't, hopefully. don't. We can't excuse them for the rest of their lives. But God, the, he has an older daughter. I think yeah. she's in her late teens, possibly 20. I'm not sure. But he has an older daughter. He has a younger daughter. And then he has a freaking baby, bro. Baby. That I don't even, I don't even know if she's one yet. But, and it's so hard to be, to be seeing these posts of him carrying his youngest daughter and look at her and be like, I don't know if she's going to remember him. And we just, we can't hold anything that they do right now, anything that they do right now yeah. with, with, with like judgment yeah. and just accept her and no love her. No prejudice at all. There's this, there's this great chance that Vanessa is being held up by, by a good team I and pray. a great family. Yeah. She's been handling herself very, very, very gracefully and carefully with everything that she's done on her social media so far and the comments that she's given out, which is almost nothing, which is amazing. Yeah. And the comments have been blocked on her thing. We don't need any good things. We don't need any bad things in Actually, her life I think right now. comments are back. Comments are but, back. Yeah, well, but, I, but um, just in that time is just when she first released that statement. It was just very, very well done. Um, but we just, you just, we can't hold them right now to be able to sustain something like to sign a movie deal for Kobe Bryant's yeah. life or for her to release a book on what it was like and everything that she went or, through. Or if the ceremony is going to be worthy or, of yeah, you know? like, who are they going to have singing? And I remember that's what they were doing with Che. So yeah, like, I so, love that you said expect nothing from them. Yeah. Um, and so like, it's like if you were a great basketball player and you knew Kobe and you guys were friends, but you're not invited, it's like, be yeah. okay with it. Oh, because you maybe forget. it wasn't on purpose. Exactly. You know. You know. So, yes. Don't get upset. And I guess we should bring it back to like us, the power of us, because we we're speaking of people that we know. But when someone close to us dies, you know, when when the spouse of a friend dies, yeah. Because you've you've ever been through it. Remember, babe, we used to go to church and like this this older male. His spouse died, and she was beloved by the church. Mm -hmm. And three months later, everyone's judging him. Mm -hmm. Like at first, they're like, "Ay, pobrecito," and you know. And then later, it's like, "Oh, he's dating." Yeah. And it's not like leave the man alone. Get yeah. me? Like, be quiet. Pray about it. You know, if anything, you go visit him. Take him some food. What if he's lonely? What yeah. if he doesn't know how to wash his clothes? I don't know. We don't know. Yeah. And I think, you know, I pray that people are gentle with you when I pass away. You know, like. Because at first they're going to be gentle, and then later on they're going to be saying, you know, how's she using her money? Because we're going to we're we're going to be rich. God's going to bless us. How is he using her money? And is he dating? And I'm going to tell you right now, baby, you date whenever you're ready. And that's just it. And those are decisions that you make because I'm gone. I'm going to be with Jesus. I'm going to be hanging out with him. And if you feel you're going to date a year or seven years later, that's on you. Get me. And I pray that my kids take it easy on you because how many kids have lost yeah. one of their parents? And don't allow the mom to ever date again. Yeah. How selfish is that? They make it hard. They get upset. And it's just, it's understandable. But at the same time, it's like you're never going to, yeah, maybe. you're never going to grieve and get through that and understand, you know? It's and like, no one is going to replace your mother and no one is going to replace your father and no one is trying to. But if your mama is 40 and lost her husband, yeah. it's okay. I mean, I'm thinking for us, at least for us, they can live what they want, but... There's yeah. a there's a time there's a time where you you get to just it's not like a pass it's not anything like that it's just you're going you're processing you're going through a process and you're you're figuring things out and and life is just hard in that time you know but the whole point is to use that time properly not just wallow in it and want to stay in there you know and and we need people around us to really help us get through that and okay. get out of that so tell me three things that you would want me or not want me to do after you pass away. I mean, let's talk about it. Like, you people don't want to have these conversations, but I think as a spouse, as we should. Like, I told you, I'd like you to cremate me. Yeah. And I'd like you to, I don't know, Long Beach, spread my ashes somewhere. Why? The reason? I don't want you stuck to a grave. Yeah. I don't want my kids stuck to a grave. I'm not mm -hmm. saying anyone else is wrong for doing that, but I want you to be able to move to Nashville if you want and live your dreams mm -hmm. and not be stuck like Rosie's here. No, Rosie's, yeah. Rosie's in the spirit world. So I wouldn't want my kids to be like, I have to, I have to come see mom every yeah. Mother's Day right. to a grave. Nope. You could, you could, I don't know, meditate. You could go pray. You could go to church, just wherever. You don't have to, yeah. you know? So that's one of the things I'd like to be cremated for that reason. What about you? I don't, 
Um, I, I don't care if I'm cremated or anything like that. It's not about anything that I want. I want my, I, I really want my funeral just to be full of the Holy Spirit. You know? oh, that's good. I really want, um, I really want, I pray that my funeral can change people's lives in some way, you know, whether if it just inspires them to just do more or just be better. So I, I really want my funeral just to be just full of nothing but, you know, just stuff where you're just surrendering to God, you know. Yeah. I, I I don't I don't care uh about about anything physical or anything like that, you know. I just really, really want it to just be full of the Holy Spirit when I pass away so in some way. In some yeah. way. I want it to be a good occasion. I don't I really don't want it to be a bad occasion. Like I want everybody wearing black but just because, like, <laughs> Abel's always wearing yeah, black. Yeah, because you're the Mexican Johnny Cash. Yeah, right, right, you know? and um, So all black, all right, good, all look good? I don't know. I, I guess I haven't thought about it. Would you want an altar call at your funeral? Nah, I wouldn't. I just, I just want everybody to just have a good time. I don't know. I mean, geez, by then I just I would have loved to have impacted people just right. to change their lives. So I guess I got to just do more of that. So I just I pray that I can have those type of people that can – really inspire other people to change people's lives because yeah, they were changed through sure. my worship or through my counseling or anything like that, you know? Yeah, um, Something I can't do after you pass away. Like, I can't date two, three days later. I can't take my new boo to your funeral. <laughs> so dumb. No, <laughs> that would kidding. never happen. Well, that's why it's a joke. Because it, No. Um, I'd be devastated. I couldn't even think of it. You, uh, something I don't want. Uh... We have to, you mean, those are things. Oh, please, like, I would need it, like, I would need it, need it to be organized. Because we've been to some funerals that are just, oh, my God, the workers are just terrible. (laughs) They're really bad, really bad, where, like, like the the dirt next to the the place where they're, the San Enterrando, I need that to be set up nice. Because we've been at some funerals where oh, it's like yeah. the dirt on the side and they just cover it with fake grass and it's just, it's terrible, you I know? I think most of them are like that, though. I know. So I just, I would want I'll something a little bit. I'll pick a nice one. I don't know, just um, more organized. We're half joking, half saying the truth. These are conversations um, we've had before, even before Kobe Bryant. So I, I just think it just, it reminded you of the devastation and I just... I pray that we can have mercy on other people that go through this and on each other and that, you know, babe, I need you to know that when I pass away, like, I don't, you cannot fail me. You cannot, you Mm. cannot do anything that'll make me love you less. That will, if people are mad at you because you decide to wear white to my wedding or you decide to sing or not sing or, or you decide to date a year later, it could not make me mad because you've been so good to me during my life yeah. that what you do after I'm gone doesn't matter. Yeah. Other than obviously, it's just the kids. Yeah. Take care of the kids' hearts and that's it. I think nobody knows the time or the date when anything is going to happen. And I think that that's one of the rudest awakenings that we just received last Sunday when he passed away, you know? And only God knows the time. And yeah. we don't know why, but that's not up to us to figure out. Yeah, it's just uh, it's up to us to just not hold judgment over Vanessa yeah. or any of the other person in that even family. Even his parents and sisters, even if you know whatever that is their issue in their situation, um, I just love to see that Kobe Bryant used every hour of his day. Like I was watching some interviews, catching up, and he said, "If if my opponent is waking up at nine, I'm gonna wake up at four. I'm gonna wake up at three. My first, and I just thought that's amazing." Um, just use every hour wisely, yeah. just, you know, for whatever your purpose or your dream or your life is, whatever it can be, use it wisely. And if anything, out of all the things I learned from Kobe, it was that. Yeah. So please take time to pray for all of the families that are impacted yeah. and take time to pray for any family that you know that's ever impacted. Don't judge, but just get on your knees and just pray. Yeah. We, we truly love you guys. We're praying for them right now. So just join us in that prayer because this is the power of us. And that's a family that was affected, many families. So um, just take some time and pray over them and pray for God's healing and restoration and that their Holy Spirit can be with them. Amen. See you guys. Bye.